Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. How many of you have had disappointments in life? How about some pretty major disappointments? How many have had some real hurts in your life? I mean, some real pain in your life. Well, you know what? It's time to stop mourning that. It's a new day. It's time to move on. Right now, today, before you leave this place, we are going to become new wine skins so we can have the new wine of the Holy Spirit poured out in us. Yes, we have problems. I have had problems. I have had disappointments in life. But you know what? By and large, it's not what happens to us that makes us unhappy. It's our attitude toward what happens to us that makes us unhappy. And if I can just get you to walk out of the darkness and turn the lights on before you leave here, and realize that Jesus has already paid a tremendous price for you to have an astoundingly wonderful life. The thief comes only to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came that you might have and enjoy your life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. And you know what? This message is not just for an arena full of people here in America. This is for you out in the middle of a village somewhere in Africa and in India and, and in places in Asia and places in Eastern Europe and, and people, you, you, the devil wants you to think that you can never have any kind of a life, barely get by, that's all you can hope for. No, you can have a wonderful, amazing, awesome life just like anybody else. It's never too late to get a fresh attitude and begin again. Never too late to begin again. Well, what happens if you had a plan and it didn't work out? Well, you know, man's mind plans his way, but God directs his steps. You know, I think we need to start trusting God that when things don't work out for us, instead of being bitter and having a bad attitude, maybe God's saving us from something that we don't even realize. Here's three little things I wrote in this book. If you've tried your best to restore a friendship, but that friend insisted on ending the relationship, God may be leading by closing a door. <laughs> God may be leading by closing a door. That may have been a friendship that would have caused you damage down the road. Let me tell you something. I've learned not to try to force my way into relationships and look at this group or that group and think I want to be part of that. Let me tell you what I pray all the time. God, you hook me up with whoever you want me to be hooked up with. If you want me to get together with that person, yay, yay. If not, I couldn't care less because I know that if God doesn't direct my path, I am only going to end up in trouble. Don't spend your life trying to get in with people you think are important because that's going to make you important. If you did the work required and tried to get into a certain college, but they rejected your application, God may be protecting you from an event that would have harmed you. If you worked as hard as you could, but the job laid you off, God may be protecting you from a career that would have never fulfilled you, nor have provided enough for your family. If you get stuck in a traffic jam and you're in a hurry and now you're all mad because you're not where you want to be, God may be protecting you from an accident down the road that could have taken your life. Instead of being frustrated, Dave and I have just learned to say, our times are in his hands. Our times are in his hands. Don't spend your life being bitter because things didn't work out the way you wanted them to, and just simply say, maybe God's got a plan that I don't know about, and I'm going to trust him. Is anybody getting anything out of this today? All right, now. I want to talk to you about getting a new wineskin. <laughs> Matthew chapter 9 and verse 16. And no one puts a piece of cloth 
that has not been shrunk on an old garment, for such a patch tears away from the garment, and a worse rent is made. Neither is new wine put in old wineskins, for if it is, the skin bursts and are torn in pieces, and the wine is spilled, and the skins are ruined. But new wine is put into fresh wineskins, and so both are preserved. I think that the new wine, as far as the way we want to talk about it today, is a new powerful life, a new beginning. And that old wineskin is an old attitude. It's old ways of thinking, old ways of thinking about yourself. We need to think about ourselves the way God sees us, not the way the world sees us. Did you hear me? You need to see yourself the way God sees you, not the way people have seen you and talked to you. Guess I better say it again. You need to see yourself the way God sees you. That's why I need to stand up here over and over and say, you are amazing, amazing. You are absolutely jaw-dropping amazing. Man, just the way our bodies are made. If I just did a health lesson, which I'm not going to do, you would be flabbergasted just to know everything that goes on in your body every day just to keep you breathing. And God's in control of all of it. He's created you. He's got his hand on you. He's maintaining you. You have gifts and talents and abilities. You've got a mind. You've got energy. You've, you've got creativity in you. Why in the world would you want to just go sit around somewhere and go? Yeah, it must be nice to be joyous. Come on, don't spend your life with some old attitude based on a bunch of old stuff that disappointed you in life. How many of you have had disappointments in life? How about some pretty major disappointments? How many have had some real hurts in your life? I mean, some real pain in your life. Well, you know what? It's time to stop mourning that. It's a new day. It's time to move on. Right now, today, before you leave this place, we are going to become new wine skins so we can have the new wine of the Holy Spirit poured out in us. It's a new day. It is a new day. If you've been disappointed, then my word to you today is get reappointed. A new attitude, wow, changes everything. You even have to have a new attitude about God. You know, we've, we've even seen God in a wrong way for so many years. God's not an angry God that's mad at everybody and just waiting to beat everybody over the head for every mistake they make. God is a God of love and mercy and a God of second chances and do-overs and new beginnings. And, and yes, He deals with us. If we sin, God deals with us. We're not just going to get by with sin. God is going to correct us and deal with us and chastise us. And He wouldn't love us if He didn't. But I'll tell you one thing. God is not going to give up on you. I said God is not going to give up on you. He is not going to give up on you. God is not only not finished with you, He has not even really gotten started yet. Amen. You got to be careful about those attitudes. You know, I went through a period of time where I had to fight that, I'm getting old attitude. You know, wake up out in a hotel somewhere, been on the road 38 years of my life, and the lights are dingy and the curtains hanging crooked and <laughs> there's stains on the carpet and you're like, I don't know, God, if I can. 
And you know what? I don't let that go, but just like a half a sentence now. Nope. Nope. I'm so blessed to be doing what I'm doing. I'm so grateful to be helping God's people. Come on. But I'm not going to tell you that I don't ever feel it. I'm just saying I ain't giving in to it. You know why? Because I'm going to finish my course. I'm going to finish my race. It doesn't take any special talent to start. But it takes a real man or woman of God and a lot of Holy Ghost power to finish your race and be all that God wants you to be. And I'm determined to try to help you as much as I could possibly, possibly can. All right, John chapter 11, the resurrection of Lazarus. First of all, I love verse 40, so I'm just going to start there. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you and promise you that if you would believe and rely on me, you would see the glory of God? Now, that's the first new attitude you need to get is an attitude of believing instead of doubting. <laughs> and every day, just get up and say, I believe that something good is going to happen to me today. Amen. Could you just form a habit? I believe that something good is going to happen to me today. Let's just try it. I believe that something good is going to happen to me today. And I can just hear some old sourpuss. Yeah, well, I tried that yesterday. Nothing good happened. Well, do it again and again and again and again and again and again and again. And do it until you wear the devil out and he gets so tired of hearing your positive attitude that he won't even visit your town anymore. Jesus went to the tomb and said, Lazarus, come out. And out he walked. But we usually don't hear the rest of the story. And the rest of the story is what I want to talk to you about today. Because Jesus said a second thing that I think is very important. He said, Take off your grave clothes. Now that's where we're at today. We're trying to get off the grave clothes. Because you are born again, you're believers, so you've already had the resurrection. You've already got the new birth. But if you've kept on your grave clothes, you're still never going to have the life that God wants you to have. What are the grave clothes? Old attitudes, old ways of thinking, old ways of talking, old ways of acting. Come on, why don't you have a new beginning in the way you talk today? How about if you just say, I am going to stop talking about things the way they are, and I'm going to talk about them the way they can be according to the Word of God. Ask God to help you not say anything negative, no matter how bad you're hurting right now. Don't give the devil an open door and an opportunity to make it worse. Just keep saying, God, I trust you. Something good is going to happen to me. It is not too late for me. I like my message today. You know, the old may be familiar, but it's also stale. And there's no anointing on stuff that God's done with. There was no anointing left on Saul anymore, but God had a new plan, a fresh anointing for a fresh plan for a fresh king. There's nothing worse than trying to keep doing something that there's no life in. As the saying goes, if the horse has been dead 10 years, it's time to dismount. <laughs> yes, wow, wow, wow. His mercy is new every morning. Every 24 hours, we get a chance for a new beginning. You know, I think just the way that God has arranged the, arranged the sunset and the sunrise is a daily message to us. I really do. I honestly do. I believe that the way he has divided up the day in 24-hour periods 
And let's just say if you're doing it right, you're awake about 16 and you sleep eight, which I know for some of you would just be shocking, but, you know. <laughs> And you know, no matter how bad things are at bedtime, if you can get a good night's sleep, they do look a little bit better the next morning. And then God says His mercy is new every morning. So really, every morning is a brand new start. Don't lay in the bed in the morning and think about all the mistakes you made yesterday. That's exactly what the devil wants you to do. He wants you to ruin today before you ever get out of bed. Thinking about all the things that you did wrong yesterday. The devil's a liar. Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43, 18. Do not earnestly remember the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. I am doing a new thing. <laughs> I tell you what, I can't hardly wait to see what God's going to do in my life in the next few years. Woo! I bet it's going to get better and better and better and better. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it, which means see it? Can you see it with the eye of faith? And will you not give heed to it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and give you rivers in the desert. What's God saying? And by the way, it doesn't matter how bad your circumstances are. <laughs> I still do a new thing. And let me tell you something, when you've had a great loss in your life, of course it hurts. Of course there's pain. There's that feeling of just, like you just feel like your guts are caving in. I understand that, I know that. I have occasions where I feel the same way. But that is just a feeling. It is just an emotion. Because anytime you put a lot of yourself into something, and it doesn't work, of course it's going to be disappointing. But you know, you really only have two choices. You can live your life disappointed, or you can have a new beginning. That's our only option. Live your life disappointed, keep living in the past, and letting the devil make you miserable, or shake that stuff off yourself, and say, God is alive and well on planet Earth. He's got a good plan for me. I am who He says I am. I can do what He says I can do. And I'm going to begin again. I'm going to have a fresh attitude and a fresh start. I'm getting off my grave clothes. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. Now, you know, we all come up short in some area. Maybe you don't learn as easily as other people do, or maybe you don't learn the same way they do. We have one son, our youngest son, who is absolutely brilliant, but he was a nightmare in school. Oh. And you know what the thing was, was he didn't, he didn't learn the normal way. And back then, they really, had, really hadn't figured that out yet, and so they had one method of education for everybody, and he learned more by hands-on and doing. He, he's more like me, more of a gut person, where he just like, he knows what to do, he feels it, and he goes. Well, now he's CEO of our ministry, and is over all this media, and over all the operations of the ministry, our our oldest son, David, is the CEO of all the outreach around the world. And between these two boys, I mean, wow, they are pumping out a lot of work and making it possible for dad and I to actually have a little bit of a life. Amen. But, you know, I honestly remember thinking, I mean, is he just going to have to live with me his whole life? <laughs> Come on, some of you got a kid you think that about. I mean, like, are you ever going to, can you ever leave? I mean, what, you know, what will you do? I mean, I had one daughter that I thought, I, I don't know what I'm going to do with her because she did, you know, 
Oh my gosh, that girl was sloppy. <laughs> and now it's funny because she's the one that runs my errands and takes care of me and helps remind me of stuff. Just give it a chance. Just because you got a shortage in life, that doesn't mean that God can't make up for it if you learn how to lean on Him. Amen? You know, I say this, and I don't mean it in any, any way of putting myself down. I know better than to do that. But I'll tell you the truth, honestly. I mean, I'm just really very ordinary. I mean... <laughs> Well, I mean, really, I don't, <laughs> I mean, I've got a normal amount of intelligence, but I'm not like extremely brilliant or anything. You know, the thing is, is if, if you just make room in your life for God and you will take those steps of faith and you won't quit and you won't give up and you won't be defeated, you will end up, God will do amazing things through you and it doesn't matter what you don't have if you do have God. Do you understand that? And it, it, you know, I don't mind telling you what I can't do because I have God. And so He is filling up my weaknesses. He keeps me strong. He keeps me young. He keeps me able. He keeps me happy. And if we will just get over ourselves, well, look at me. Well, don't look at you. Look at Him. All right, I got I to gotta end talking for a minute about Zacchaeus. I'm sorry if you've heard me talk about him, but I just love him. Luke chapter 19, you can read it for yourself. Jesus was coming to town and Zacchaeus wanted to see him, but he was too short to see over the other people. Short little Zacchaeus. I love it. We're all short in some way. Man, he could have just went behind a tree somewhere and had a fit. Well, I'm short, and I can't see Jesus, and everybody else is going to get to see Jesus, and now I'm just short, and why couldn't I have been tall? Must be nice for all you tall people. <laughs> Come on, you, you understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. But no, Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus, so he ran ahead of the crowd and climbed up in a tree. <laughs> have we got any tree climbers here today? Now, you understand there's a spiritual connotation here. Okay, so you, you got a disadvantage somewhere. Well, just try a little harder. Maybe you do have to try a little harder in school. Maybe you do have to try a little harder to keep your life organized. Everybody's got something. You know, I'm directionally challenged. And I end up in the men's bathroom more than I would want to tell you. I mean, I'm not kidding. I just, I come out of the hotel room and I don't care if I come out 10 times in a weekend and you're supposed to turn to the left, I will always turn to the right. <laughs> I do not know what my deal is. I can get lost in a bathroom. <laughs> well, I do know I've always got my head off somewhere else, you know. And, but you know what? I'm willing to climb a tree. Stop being concerned about what you can't do and what you don't do well and start maximizing on what you can do and let God take care of the rest of it. Now listen, I'm coming to the end of this. Zacchaeus was a short little guy, but he wanted something and he said, I'm going to get it. And he ran ahead and he climbed a tree. And if you read the story, this is what happened. As Jesus was passing by, he noticed Zacchaeus in the tree. Now, why in the world would Jesus look up at a tree? Because something in Zacchaeus' spirit touched something in Jesus' spirit, and there was a connection. Because God loves those determined, I refuse to quit people. It doesn't matter if I got a shortage, I'm going to press in and be all that God wants me to be. And do you know what Jesus said to Zacchaeus? He said, come on down from there. I'm going to go to your house for dinner. Wow. 
and he was a tax collector, an especially wicked sinner, and a thief. But Jesus saw something in him he could work with. And I believe that God sees something in you today that he can work with. You may have to climb a few trees in life, but you can have a new beginning. It's never too late to begin again. Come on, get up on your feet and give God a big shout. I would just like to encourage you to just make your mind up that you're not going to live in disappointment, regret, or even the shadow of past failures. And allow God to give you a new beginning. He's waiting to do that. You know, there's a new beginning for you. It's never too late to begin again. Philippians 3.13, the Apostle Paul said, but one thing I do, it was really important to him, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. You know, today we want to help you really be encouraged and to not let all the downs in life drag you down with them. When this mother first carried her daughter into the room, our hearts sank and tears immediately sprang to our eyes. It's a far too common sight here in East Africa, children suffering from malnutrition on the verge of starvation. It's difficult to see, but something we can't ignore. We did assessment among um, 8,000 families, and I asked mothers, how many children do you have? Some would say seven, some would say eight, and I say, how many are alive? Half, four, or three. So that was the story of this village. Tell us about this family. Do you remember when you first came in contact with them? Yeah, uh, when they brought Nagash. The Nagash was five months old, and he was very tiny, uh, malnourished in young infant. Not only him, but the, if you see the mother, she was so depressed, uh, significant weight loss, and uh, you don't see any smile on her face. And uh, also the other kids were also underweight. This is real and it's happening every single day. And what they're seeing is not a starving child. They're seeing a child that will not live. That's what you're really seeing. You're seeing a child before it dies, because if we don't help, the child will not survive. Pat Bradley is with Crisis Aid International, the organization that Hand of Hope has been working with in this part of the world for many years. And this new permanent clinic is taking care to a new level offering inpatient treatment for the severely malnourished, providing families with life-saving opportunities that didn't exist before. So we admitted all the, the, all the family and uh, we give him all the care he needs. Big difference when you see him now? Now there is a huge significant difference. He's uh, gaining weight, he's so playful. <laughs> now one year old, he's trying to walk and you can see the difference on the, all, the whole family. Well, it's wonderful to see yeah, yeah. what God can do. Were you afraid that you were going to lose your son, that he wouldn't make it? I lost hope. I thought you'd die. I, I thought you, I'm going to lose him, but I did a last attempt and brought him to the clinic. I was praying when I came to the clinic. I was praying to God. And when they say to me, yeah, we'll keep him and we'll treat him, I mean, I was, I was so happy. God has heard my prayer. There's no exaggeration. There are tens of thousands of children today who are alive because of Hand of Hope. 
Isaias is an amazing little man. He became our instant friend and we had such a great time with him. He and many of the kids on this playground are joyful and full of life because you've given them an opportunity to live. God answered many prayers and you provided a way when no way existed. And many more need our loving help.